Hi everyone, this is Ms. Romani again. And for this lesson, we will be expanding our understanding of cellular respiration. So far we have seen how our cells use glucose as a source of energy. So in this lesson, we will explore how our cells metabolize proteins, fats, and sugars that are not glucose as a source of energy. After all, living things consume more than glucose for food. So to start, let's recall that during the digestion of nutrients, we break down proteins into individual amino acids. Carbohydrates, like say disaccharides and polysaccharides, into monosaccharides, and any fats or triglycerides into glycerol and fatty acids. It is these monomers of nutrients that are absorbed through our small intestines into our bloodstream and then can enter our cells to be used for energy. Let's start by exploring how carbohydrates other than glucose are metabolized for energy. Carbohydrates will enter the early stages of glycolysis as monosaccharides. The starch in pasta, for example, will be digested and hydrolyzed into glucose in the digestive system. That glucose, of course, then just enters the cellular respiration at the very start of glycolysis. Glycogen, on the other hand, you may remember is a polysaccharide that is formed in animal liver and muscle cells. When blood glucose levels are low, the pancreas secretes a hormone that stimulates the hydrolysis of glycogen. Now in liver cells, glycogen is broken down into glucose. That glucose is released into the bloodstream to be used by other cells and enters glycolysis at the very start. However, in muscle cells, a different enzyme is used that phosphorylates glycogen as it's broken down, producing glucose 6-phosphate. In muscle cells, the glucose 6-phosphate enters the second step of glycolysis. Sucrose is a disaccharide. It is made up of a molecule of glucose and a molecule of fructose bonded together. The hydrolysis of sucrose produces glucose and a fructose that is phosphorylated into fructose 6-phosphate before glycolysis. Glucose, of course, can enter at the very start of glycolysis and fructose 6-phosphate as the third step of glycolysis. Lactose, or milk sugar, is a disaccharide whose hydrolysis produces a glucose and a galactose. The glucose, again, enters at the start of glycolysis and the galactose sugar is phosphorylated and changed into a glucose 6-phosphate before it can enter glycolysis. Now let's look at fat metabolism. As you learn in the biochemistry unit, the hydrolysis of fats, or triglycerides, like the one depicted here, produces a molecule of glycerol and three fatty acids. The glycerol has three carbons, and so it can be phosphorylated and converted to the three carbon glyceraldehyde three phosphate and can enter glycolysis after the sugar is split. The fatty acids, on the other hand, go through a series of chemical reactions called beta oxidation. Beta oxidation splits each fatty acid into many molecules of two carbon acetyl CoA. Acetyl CoA is the product of pyruvate oxidation. So that's where they enter cellular respiration, right before the Krebs cycle. Each acetyl-CoA is a two-carbon molecule, so the number of them that are produced depends on the number of carbons in the fatty acid. The triglyceride that is depicted here, for example, is made up of three fatty acid chains that have 16 carbons each. This can be broken down into 24 separate molecules of acetyl-CoA each of them able to enter the citric acid cycle. So finally, let's look at proteins. Since there are 20 different amino acids that can be used to make up proteins, the catabolism of proteins will produce a variety of different amino acids depending on the protein. And the first thing that must happen to each amino acid prior to them entering cellular respiration is the removal of the nitrogen-containing amino group. This is a process called deamination. And this is essential because the molecules involved in cellular respiration do not contain amino groups. Because there are 20 different possible amino acid R groups, each of them can enter cellular respiration at different stages depending on their chemical composition. Depending on the R groups involved, amino acids are converted to either pyruvate 
or acetyl-CoA or various molecules that are part of the citric acid cycle. Here's an image that can show you the specific entrance points for various amino acids. And by the way, the ammonia that is produced during the deamination of proteins and also during the deamination of nucleic acids when they are broken down is actually pretty toxic to cells. I mean, ammonia is a pretty toxic compound. Living things have therefore evolved various methods of removing and or detoxifying this ammonia. Ammonia needs lots of water in order to be excreted quickly and safely out of the body. So most aquatic animals, including most bony fish, release the ammonia to the water that surrounds them through their gills or other body surfaces. On the other hand, mammals, most amphibians, and some fishes like sharks and some species of bony fish first use their livers to convert the very toxic ammonia to a less toxic urea. Urea also requires water to be excreted, so mammals like us, for example, excrete the urea in our urine. Now, many reptiles, birds, and insects, for example, mainly excrete uric acid. Uric acid is much less toxic and requires a lot of energy to produce. But for these animals, the energy investment that is required to convert ammonia into uric acid pays off since uric acid can actually be excreted as a paste with very little water loss. Okay, so to summarize, proteins are broken down into different amino acids. And then after deamination, enter pyruvate oxidation and the citric acid cycle as various molecules depending on the amino acid R groups involved. Carbohydrates are either monosaccharides or are broken down into monosaccharides that enter glycolysis as either glucose, glucose 6-phosphate, or fructose 6-phosphate, depending on the sugar. Fats, or triglycerides, are broken down into glycerol and fatty acids. The glycerol enters glycolysis as a single molecule of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, while the fatty acids are broken down by beta-oxidation into several molecules of acetyl-CoA that then enter the citric acid cycle. And that's it. Now you know how pretty much almost any nutrient can be metabolized and used as a source of ATP energy through cellular respiration. Talk to you soon.